Hello everyone, my name is Marion. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, I do have a lot of CT registry review lessons available. You just have to click on playlist under my YouTube page and you will see CT registry slash CQR review. So um, I do have patient care, I have sectional anatomy. So just go through the playlist and you will have um, the CT registry review for you. But in today's video, this is for the image production physics portion. This is the specification for ART website, but you can use this CT registry review for any board exam. Since I have my license through ART, I just use their website to review the information that will be on the test. So I've already covered patient care. I've covered safety. I have questions review questions and answers out now for patient care and safety, I believe. For anatomy, I can make some if you want me to, just put it in the comment box if you want me to make anatomy questions. But you can go look at my anatomy playlist for CT and you can review the anatomy that way as well. But for physics part one, it's going to be under image production. This is going to be another big part of the test, the physics portion. So it'll be about 50 questions. But for this section, we will talk about the CT system, how it operates, the CT X-ray tube, anode and cathode, and then we'll talk about KVP and mass settings. Now we'll talk about the principles behind a CT scanner. The X-ray beam rotates around the patient, which is exposing the volume of tissues. The image is obtained when X-ray radiation is transmitted through the body and attenuated. The CT detectors measure the radiation that the patient is receiving. So that is what the CT detectors does. You also have slip ring technology. This enables continuous data and power transfer between the rotating X-ray tube and the detectors. This will eliminate the need for cables, which allows helical scanning and improved image quality. Helical spiral CT allows you to continuously move a patient through a scanner while the X-ray tube rotates. This results in a 3D data set that can be used to create detailed images without gaps. This allows for faster scan times. So um, I want someone in the comment box to let me know if you have noticed where it has on the CT scanner helical and axial. So before you hit go, you can have the option to change the brain or head scan from, heli from helical to axial or axial to helical. So the difference between the two is, I've seen this a lot when I was working in the ER setting with a lot of other CT techs. So I would see the text change it to helical because they did not want to wait for the x-ray machine to tilt and then hit go to start the scan. And I don't know, you. I, I was taught to use the axial and you let the tube rotate because you are angling the box to um, get the orbits out of the image you know as much as you can to reduce radiation to the orbits so a lot of techs would just do helical if they're in a rush and don't want to wait for the tube to angle but in my opinion it only takes maybe 10 15 seconds to angle the tube maybe even less and then it allows for less radiation dose to the orbit so um i'll just leave that up to you and how you were trained for axial CT scanning, that is what I was telling you about, how you angle the tube whenever you are setting up your images and you're angling it to the anatomy for the head. And then sometimes whenever you do set it up, the machine may tilt, let's say 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 25 degrees, depending on the patient's head in the scanner. So that is what axial CT scanning is. Um, you're angling a tube and then the patient table remains stationary during the data acquisition. Um, the x-ray tube rotates around the patient, which allows a series of images slices to be taken. 
axial scans are commonly used for head exams to minimize helical artifacts. So I know where I work at, the machine, well, I'm using GE too. So also let me know in the comment box if you use GE or if you use Siemens, but the scan is automatically set for you to run an axial scan, but a lot of techs would change it to helical so that they don't have to wait for the machine to tilt. But axial scans are used in some gated cardiac exams as well. The steps in obtaining and processing a CT image, you have your data acquisition. This is going to measure the attenuation that occurs as a result of the patient and from the x-ray tube to the CT scanner detector. Data reconstruction. This is the process that occurs during the transmission measurements for a CT image. Multidimensional image display. This is a displayed image of the reconstructed grayscale from a 2D and 3D image. So this image is from the attenuation of a volume of tissue that was scanned. And then you have your packs. This is where you are going to send the images to, how the images are stored, if they are stored for short-term use, long-term use. So this is the computer workstations or the packs. And then here you have the components to a CT image. You have the patient, which is the subject to scan. You have your X-ray source, X-ray detector, your image reconstruction from CT slices, um, how you are doing your, your NPRs, are you having it as sagittal, coronal, axial, things like that. And then you have your digital to analog conversion, and then you have displaying the CT image. So that's the final image. And then this is just an illustration. You have your X-ray tube, you have where you can see where the gantry is, where the patient's laying at, you have your detectors, and then you have that final X-ray or CT image. For your scalp image, this is also known as a topogram or a scanogram. A scalp image is a low dose X-ray image that is used to scan and locate the area of interest before finishing the main CT images. A scalp image can help to ensure that you are in the right area before you even start, especially if you are um, scanning a head, scanning a chest. So it's going to be the first initial image you take just to make sure that you are at the right location, that you have the right body part, the right anatomy and field of view. This is an example of a scalp CT image. The orange lines is pretty much how I will set it up. Um, especially for a chest, you want to make sure that you are getting the adrenal glands in because it's where most cancer, they say, can metastasize to if you have like cancer or a patient has cancer. So you just want to make sure that you are getting the adrenal glands, which sit right above the kidney, just to check for a mix. And then you, you see the orange line, that's pretty much how I would set it up. So... Um, this is your chest, and then you have your abdomen and pelvis scan. These are scalp images. Now we're going to talk about the KVP or kilovoltage peak. This refers to the peak potential applied to the X-ray tube. This determines the energy and quality of the X-ray photons. A big influence for image contrast and radiation dose. So keep in mind, higher KVP results in a lower contrast image. Lower KVP results in a higher contrast image. Increasing the KVP will increase the radiation dose to the patient. So anytime you have to change your KVP and increase it, just keep in mind that it will increase the patient radiation dose. Lowering the KVP can reduce the radiation dose to the patient. This is extremely helpful in pediatric patients. Um, put in a comment box if you work at a pediatric hospital and you're trying to do CT scans on PDs, whenever people or CT techs have to interact or scan pediatrics, if they do it often, it's, it's second nature for them to automatically know, hey, this setting need to be changed to this, or they already have the settings in place for pediatric patients. 
but I work at a hospital where, or a clinic because I go to both, I'm a travel tech. So I work at a hospital and a clinical area where I don't see any PDs. And if I do see pediatric patients, it's probably one patient every six to eight months or every one to two years because where I live at, there are children hospitals, so they don't have to come to adult hospitals unless it's like an emergency or closer or the family member want them to go to a specific hospital. But I'm just saying, whenever you work at a hospital where you do not see kids a lot, then it make you to it make you forget to change your settings from an adult setting to a pediatric setting. Don't forget to change your setting. It's on the computer. Whether or not you scan PEDIS or not, that company has adult settings and pediatric settings. So just don't forget to change it because you will give the kid more radiation dose than what they need. And then for um, you have 120 kvp. This is the common setting for CT studies. Whenever you are scanning, no matter what body part you are scanning, look and see what KVP, what mass setting is being used for that anatomy or that body part for that patient. You also have 80 KVP, 100 and 140 is an option and is used as well. I have not seen a KVP range above 140. If you have, let me know. Um, KVP settings depend on the patient size and the desired image quality. 80 KVP can be used in pediatric CT and CTA studies. Now we have our mass. This represents the total amount of radiation exposure. Mass is very crucial for image quality and patient dose. It can be adjusted based on the patient's anatomy and their size. So a lot of times whenever I was or seen someone scan um, the CTA, the chest PEs, a lot of times whenever you have to smart prep, if you all know what that is, whenever you had to smart prep in the aorta, sometimes depending on if a patient had a large body habitus, you could barely see where you were smart prepping at the aorta. So a lot of times either I or a tech had to increase the settings um, for that for that patient. So say for instance, if I had a mass setting of 30 already selected, I'm not going to bump it up to 80 or 90. I'm going to probably go up to 35, maybe even 40, and see if it can give me a clear image of that smart prep. So um, keep in mind, Whenever you do adjust that, uh, an alert will come up and it will pretty much say, hey, you're giving this patient more radiation exposure or it's going to be a, an alert come up. So just read the alert and then you have to type in a comment of why you are increasing the dose. Now, this is for a GE scanner. I'm not sure how it works for other scanners, but, you know, you could just type in large body habitus. So, you know, something like that. And um, you also have mass is the tube current MA in the second and the exposure time seconds. Mass directly affects the quantity of x-rays produced during a CT scan, which will influence image density and radiation dose. Higher mass creates a brighter, denser image. Lower mass settings creates a darker image. So that's why I was saying whenever we had the CTA, or the PE study, we will increase the mass because it gave us a better image so that we can see where we were smart prepping at. And this, you don't have to change it for everyone. This was something we was changing it for, for patients who had a large body habitus. It also increases, the mass directly increases the amount of radiation exposure to the patient. Large body habitus patients require higher mass settings to create a high quality diagnostic image, more radiation is needed to penetrate through the body's tissue. So that's the reason why. For adult CT scans, you have 100 kvp and 150 to 250 mass settings that is recommended. I'm not saying this is used. What I'm saying is textbook wise, this is what is recommended. And then 120 kvp and 150 to 250 mass settings 
or for better low contrast resolution. Now we have our anode and cathode. We'll start with the cathode is right underneath the picture. A cathode is a crucial component of the X-ray tube, which acts as a negative electrode that emits electrons through thermionic emission, which are accelerated and focused to the X-ray beam. So you may remember this from X-ray school because we talked about this a lot. Then you have your anode, the positive terminal part of the tube where the target material is housed in. It is a rotating metal disc, usually tungsten or copper, that is bombarded with electrons to produce X-rays. All right, that's it for this lesson. This is part one. If you would like part two, please let me know in the comment box. I received a lot of comments saying, hey, where's your physics? Um, can you do a physics? It's a big part of the ART registry. So I will start making the physics lessons if you want me to. I do have patient care, patient safety. I have sexual anatomy. I have review questions and answers. Just click on my CT registry review playlist because I do have other things on my page that I like to do on my page. But just click on CT registry slash CQR review and you will see other videos for the CT registry. And I think the reason why I paused the physics portion was because, like I was um, telling someone, it's, um, it's a little bit time consuming to make the videos if no one is watching them. So if you are watching them and if you find the videos to be helpful to you, can you please give it a thumbs up or and subscribe just so it can motivate me to make more. It'll just let me know that people are watching. I'm helping people. People enjoy the presentation. And then after you have passed your registry, you can come back to the videos and say, hey, I passed my registry. You know, just let me know how you did on your registry. And even if you are just working in CT and you're using this for a CQR, I had someone comment on, it was a guy, he commented on one of my videos and he was pretty much like, thank you. I'm using this for a CQR because you can use it for a CQR as well. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comment box if you want me to do part two. Bye.